Hi, this is Peter from Anatomy Zone and in this tutorial we're going to look at the anatomy of the median nerve. This video is a collaboration between Anatomy Zone and teachmeanatomy.info. Check out the links in the video description below for the relevant articles to complement this video tutorial. We're looking here at a schematic of the brachial plexus. For more information on the brachial plexus, check out my video tutorials on this subject. Just to briefly recap, the brachial plexus originates from spinal nerve roots C5 to T1, and it consists of roots, trunks, divisions, and cords. There are five main peripheral nerves which arise from the brachial plexus as terminal branches and supply the upper limb. Arising from the lateral cord, you have the musculocutaneous nerve. From the posterior cord, you get the axillary nerve and the radial nerve. From the medial cord, you get the ulnar nerve. And where the medial cord joins the lateral cord, you get the median nerve. As you can see from this schematic, if you trace the median nerve backwards, you will see that it contains nerve fibers from all of the five nerve roots. So the median nerve contains fibers from nerve root C5 to T1. The median nerve has both motor and sensory function. In terms of motor function, it innervates the flexor muscles in the anterior compartment of the forearm, except for the flexor carpi ulnaris and the medial half or ulnar half of the flexor digitorum profundus. These two muscles are innervated by the ulnar nerve. Within the hand, the median nerve supplies innervation to the thenar muscles and the lateral two lumbricals. In terms of the sensory innervation, the median nerve gives rise to a palmar cutaneous branch which innervates the lateral part of the palm. In this diagram here on the left, you can see this patch of skin on the palmar surface laterally which is innervated by the palmar cutaneous branch. And you can also see that there are three and a half fingers also shaded in the same green color, which are supplied by the digital branches of the median nerve. I've switched over now to a 3D view. What we're looking at here is the median nerve originating from the brachial plexus from the medial and lateral cords. It's not shown very well in this model here, but initially the median nerve sits lateral to the brachial artery and as it descends further proximally, it crosses over to become more medial and sits medial to the brachial artery. I've zoomed out a little bit here and you can see the median nerve descending in the medial aspect of the arm alongside the brachial artery. It then enters the elbow at the cubital fossa and passes into the anterior compartment of the forearm. I've just moved the model a little bit more distally and we can see a closer view of the median nerve entering via the cubital fossa and entering into the anterior compartment of the forearm. Within the forearm, the median nerve travels between the flexor digitorum profundus muscle and the flexor digitorum superficialis muscle. There are two major branches which come off the median nerve in the forearm. Proximally, you've got the anterior interosseous nerve and distally you've got the palmar cutaneous nerve. The anterior interosseous nerve supplies the deep flexor muscles of the anterior compartment of the arm. These muscles include the flexor pollicis longus, the pronator quadratus, and the lateral half of the flexor digitorum profundus muscle. The medial half or ulnar half of this muscle is innervated by the ulnar nerve. The median nerve directly innervates the muscles in the superficial and intermediate layers. In the superficial layer, it provides innervation to the pronator teres, the flexor carpi radialis, and the palmaris longus. The flexor carpi ulnaris muscle is innervated by the ulnar nerve. So essentially what you need to know is that the median nerve supplies all the muscles of the anterior compartment of the forearm, except the medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus and the flexor carpi ulnaris, which are innervated by the ulnar nerve. Now moving to a more distal view of the hand and the wrist, the second nerve which arises in the forearm from the median nerve is the palmar cutaneous nerve. You can see this here highlighted in green and it passes over the flexor retinaculum. 
This nerve innervates the skin of the lateral palm. I've just made the flexor retinaculum transparent and you can see the median nerve passing underneath the flexor retinaculum within the carpal tunnel. Within the carpal tunnel, the median nerve can get compressed, causing carpal tunnel syndrome. This is the most common mononeuropathy and can be caused by thickened ligaments and tendon sheaths. There are several medical causes for carpal tunnel syndrome, but it's most commonly idiopathic. At its most extreme, when untreated, carpal tunnel syndrome can cause weakness and atrophy of the thenar muscles. In addition, you get numbness, tingling and sensory changes in the distribution of the median nerve affecting the lateral three and a half digits. Because the palmar cutaneous branch of the median nerve passes over the flexor retinaculum, you get sparing of the sensation to the lateral aspect of the palm in carpal tunnel syndrome. The median nerve then enters the hand after passing through the carpal tunnel and divides into a recurrent branch, which you can see highlighted in blue, and it also divides into common palmar digital branches. The recurrent branch, which you can see in light blue here, innervates the thenar muscles. You can see the recurrent branch here supplying the flexor pollicis brevis and the abductor pollicis brevis. It also passes between these two muscles to supply the opponent's pollicis. The palmar digital branches supply the lateral two lumbricals of the hand, which you can see here. The common palmar digital nerves then divide into two to become the proper palmar digital nerves. You can see how the palmar digital nerves supply the lateral three and a half digits. And in terms of the sensory innovation, the palmar digital nerves therefore innervate the palmar surface and fingertips of these lateral three and a half digits. This diagram here just shows the pattern of innervation of the median nerve. This part of the palm, the lateral part of the palm, is innervated by the palmar cutaneous branch of the median nerve. And then the lateral three and a half digits on the palmar surface are innervated by the palmar digital nerves and dorsally the distal fingertips of the lateral three and a half nerves are supplied also. So that's an overview of the anatomy of the median nerve. For more anatomy articles visit teachmeanatomy.info and for more videos check out anatomyzone.com. Thank you for watching.